Our topic today is slope. We, uh, as underwriters, have looked at slope over the many years. We thought we've always had to do the whole rise over run methodology to determine the slope. And Scott, one of our team members on today, was talking to an agent, and we wondered if we could solve it. And Scott, can you kind of lead us into that conversation and what led us to try and solve this slope calculation issue? Yeah, slope scout um, was a direct result of feedback we received from from both our customers and from from independent agents. Um, you know, I know from an underwriter um, whether you're whether you're looking at uh, quake or flood. Um, looking at rise um, from distances of water, um, it was very manual calculation. I, I would put up Google Earth, which I would try to find the free version because we didn't have access to it, and I would be manually dropping lines um, from bodies of water or across the pro the parcel line um, to see what the elevation change to look like. And and we got similar feedback from from independent agents that are asked to provide that type of information. Um, to, to their carriers that are either providing Quake or DIC. Um, so this is this was a, a result of trying to find a um, a solution to problems faced by many. And slope's one of those things. I mean, as a young underwriter, I remember you know you'd always look for that particular spot within an application. Back then, it was paper apps. Today, it's not. Uh, and so when I think about slope, and Chris is our really our underwriting expert. There's a lot of stuff about slope. We always worried about earthquake and landslide, but there's way, way more to slope than that. Chris, do you have some wonderful insights as you always do as to what you might worry about with slope? Certainly. Uh, it, property insurance rates are based on well-maintained buildings on flat property. Uh, they're not, they don't anticipate a, a any kind of significant slope. Uh, slope over 10 percent or 10 degrees uh, increases the cost to rebuild the home uh, and uh, makes it more and more difficult for wildfire uh, or for fire department resources to uh, to access the property. Uh, once it gets over 20 degrees, uh, the costs really begin to mount with specialized foundations, uh, sloping roadways into the property. Uh, Wildfire loves a hillside. It loves a slope. It just goes from the bottom to the top very effectively uh, and also can channel the wind in those situations. Uh, trees on hillsides are affected by gravity like anything else, and they don't have a an engineered foundation, uh, and they tend to fall much more uh, quickly and more frequently than would be on flat property. And you're more frankly, more exposed to direct weather. Uh, nobody wants a nice screen of protective trees in front of their house blocking their view of the sound, you know, so they cut all those down. Uh, so now you're just really getting all the wind and rain and in some areas of the country hail direct as, as a direct exposure. The one I always think about, and I don't know why, it's probably because I had some losses like this, would be a you're on a pretty good slope with a sometimes not great staircases or <laughs> pebbled beach, whatever, up to the house and the slip and fall action that happens there. Yeah, you have a mid limit, but still that potential for having invitees and non-invitees slipping and falling and hurting themselves. Kids, you know, let's set up a trampoline on that slope, see what happens. A lot of that kind of stuff that occurs. And I think that it's yet another thing to worry about with slope. So we've We've underwritten slope for years, and as Scott said, right? How do we figure out a way to do this more strategically, intellectually, and have access to our customers, including subscribers as well as agents? And we've actually built it. And so, Carrie Napier from our team, she is a GIS guru, brains in the operation, great at project management. She's kind of led this uh, development, and uh, we wanted her to be here to tell us a little bit about how that pro how it works and what the experience would be for a customer when they come in and use our Slope product, Slope Scout. As Scott was saying earlier, you know, often in what you have to do when you're trying to measure slope is pick your points along the line and do a, a just a straight rise over run calculation. And that can be, it can give you an idea, but there's a lot more nuance, <laughs> nuance that can happen, you know, in between one point and another. So what we've done is, you know, we're taking 
um, digital elevation models, and we're actually taking the elevation at each of those points. And so the report that you'll be able to pull with Slope Scout will show you the, the chart of what is happening along every line that you're selecting. So you get a lot more detail about what's happening between your beginning and end point. And we also will do that along an X and a Y within your building so that you'll be able to get a cross section and be able to see both directions uh, very quickly. And you'll be able to spin your vertices the way that you want along your building orientation. Just a much more simple calculation um, or interaction on your part in order to get a, a much better, a much more detailed view of your elevation um, around your building. Currently, we have we are using building footprints as the basis for how you will calculate slope and how you will select. So you'll select a building, and from there you'll be able to calculate the slope around that building. Um, and what we've done is we've compiled the Microsoft building footprints and the um, OpenStreetMap building footprints. We've we've made kind of a comp compilation of those to get really good coverage across the state. And we've also matched those building footprints with the parcel address underneath that. So you have that built into the data as well. Um, we currently only have it for Washington State, but um, depending on usage and everything like that, we do have, we can expand um, to other states. Although it sounds a bit technical about how the uh, the computing's being done. I, I think the maps or, or the charts that we put on there are very intuitive um, to very to simplify a very complicated process. So when you take a look, you can see the slope, how it's approaching the building, where it's at at the building footprint or foundation, and as it exits the property, um, simplifies what what could be very complex. We do have really high quality. Um, elevation data across most of the state. And so we're actually able to take uh, the elevations often every one meter, so like three-ish feet. And so that really allows you to see a lot of detail. Um, we've been able to pick up a lot of retaining walls and different things like that that you might miss um, if you're just looking at you know one beginning and one endpoint. Um, and we've also made the effort to uh, do our calculations so that you get, you know, kind of intuitively the slope that you'll get, you know, intuitively when you look at a line, you can kind of see, or a hill, you'll say, oh, that's about a 10% slope. Um, and so we've really tried to to factor our calculations in so that it gives you that intuitive uh, kind of what you see in your mind when you look at a hill to show that on our charts as well. Yeah, it's slope, uh, slope Scout has a lot of computing power. Um, being that it's doing an elevation analysis every uh, one meter or, or approximately three feet. And that was definitely one of the hidden benefits of when we were testing it is I, I put in my address, um, obviously, as a test location, and it easily picked up the retaining walls um, both behind my house and, and in front, um, which was a nice added benefit, a nice bonus. Uh, yeah, it picked up the slope on my property, which is to say negligible, it was three three degrees. Um, I went and pulled the title and it, the engineering survey says three degrees. Uh, so it works. And it, you know, it, it was a fairly small slope. And so, but still dead on. Automatic and accurate. <laughs> yeah, all you have to, the beauty of this product and really what we started at was how can we just make rise over run easier to figure out and it's evolved into this really beautiful product that you pick your address it hits the middle of the building it spreads out from there and you can manipulate how far out you want to stretch it to see what the slope is whether that be 15 20 feet behind the house out to have 300 feet is what our standard is but you will you will enjoy getting to play around with it and making sure that you know what you're getting into when you price and write a risk. And so we're kind of, we're not just kind of, we're extremely excited for this to launch in late September. And we look forward to all of you using it and giving us feedback and enhancing it and giving us ideas. So look forward to that here in the next month or so when we launch it. Um, and again, thanks to this team for helping us talk about it, get the world excited about it. And we look forward to all of your input when you view the video. And again, if you have other ideas about what we can talk about on the Quick 15, 
We always appreciate ideas and we're always happy to jump on the, on the video here and talk about it. So thanks all. We appreciate it.